In this video, let's learn about what is ASP.NET Core. ASP.NET Core is a web development framework that helps developers to create web application. Therefore, first of all, in order to understand it completely, we need to understand what a web application is. A web application is fundamentally a network communication program that has two parts, a client and a server. The client sends a request to the server and the server replies a response. In the case of web development, typically a client is a browser and the server is usually called a web server. And this is where a web application is hosted. Because it is a network communication program, the messages that are sent back and forth between the browser and the web server have to follow certain rules. Just like when you communicate between two people, they need to use a certain language that follows certain grammar. You can try to send something like ABC to the web server, and the web server is going to receive it. It is just that the web server won't be able to understand it. Therefore, it won't understand what you want the server to do. The rules that communication messages must follow in network communication programs are called protocols. In the case of web applications, the protocol is called the HTTP protocol. The message that is sent from the browser to the server is called a HTTP request. And the message that comes back from the web server to the browser it's usually called a HTTP response. Now we have mentioned that a web development framework like ASP.NET Core helps developers to create this web application. So let's break it down a little bit. A web development framework needs to help developer to understand the HTTP request based on the HTTP protocol. So therefore the first step is to understand the request. And after it understands the request, it will need to execute the actual business logic. Every web application is created for a purpose, and usually it fulfills a business purpose, and we call that business logic. So this is the core part, right? We need to be able to execute the business logic once we understand what the request want us to do. And finally, we need to work on produce the result and put it into the HTTP response so that it can be sent back to the browser to be displayed within the browser. So the third step to produce results. ASP.NET Core provides us a framework to complete all of these three different tasks. Although we as developers should focus our energy in implementing the actual business logic here, we should also know how ASP.NET Core works because the other two parts are not done automatically for us. We need to understand how they work. We need to be able to configure them. We need to be able to use them properly ASP.NET Core provides this framework and we need to fill in the blanks. That is why we have this course for you to help you dive deep into the ASP.NET Core framework. In this video, we're going to learn about the ASP.NET Core anatomy, and we are going to learn about it by breaking down this diagram that we talked about in the previous video. So let's borrow that over here. So we need to break down this diagram. The first task that a web development framework like ASP.NET Core needs to perform is to understand the request. Usually, a HTTP request comes in as a string. In order to understand the request, firstly, it needs to translate the HTTP request into a .NET object. And in ASP.NET Core, we call that object HTTP context. So translate request that corresponds first to this first task. Once the HTTP request is translated into the HTTP context object, the object contains all the information that the request has. So we keep this, once we have this context object, we can pass this object to other parts of the framework. And developers can also access this object directly when necessary. So therefore, you know, the first thing ASP.NET Core does is to translate the HTTP request to an object. Now we can talk about the execution of the business logic here. But before we do that, let's establish a terminology here. When we are executing the business logic, there are different things involved. But eventually, there's going to be a 
final function that contains the business logic, at least contains the business logic indirectly. And that final function is called endpoint handler. The reason why it's called endpoint handler is because an endpoint in ASP.NET Core is basically a unit that handles a request. So therefore, the final function that actually execute our business logic, which in turn handles the request, is called the endpoint handler. So once we have that terminology established, now we can think about how we are going to execute business logic. Right? In a real-world application, real-world web application, you are going to have lots of business logic to be executed. Therefore, there's not going to be just one single endpoint handler. There's going to be many endpoint handlers. Then the question is, which endpoint handler should be triggered once a request is received? The functionality that maps a request to an endpoint handler is called routing. So the second thing SPDN Core does is to find out which endpoint handler needs to be executed, and this is called routing. Now that we know which endpoint handler needs to be executed, we need to determine whether the request actually has permission to access the endpoint handler or not. And that functionality is what we call authentication and authorization. If the request has permission to access the endpoint handler, we can then try to trigger the endpoint handler. But sometimes the endpoint handler contains some parameters as primitive types or complex types. Therefore, we need to extract the information from the HTTP context object, bind that information to our parameters in the endpoint handler. And that binding process is called model binding. So the next part in our NetMe is model binding, which binds the data from the HTTP context to the parameters of our endpoint. Now, through model binding we have the data that we need to be passed before we actually execute the logic we need to validate the data sometimes the data passed to the endpoint handler is invalid sometimes it is malicious therefore we need to validate the data to make sure the data is usable and that process is called model validation model binding means that we're going to have the data within the model. Now we need to validate the model. That's why it's called model validation. So here, model validation. After validation, we have the data. I finally have everything to execute the endpoint handler. The endpoint handler is where developers actually implement the business logic. It all boils down to a one single function. But it doesn't mean that every time we just create a simple function. In ASP.NET Core, we have different options. For example, we can choose to use MVC, we can use Razor Pages, or if you just want to use a simple function, you can use the minimal API endpoint handlers. And of course, if you really have a small application, but you want to use ASP on a core to complete the functionality of your application, then you can just stick to the middleware pipeline, which we're going to cover very soon in our course. I put middleware pipeline here. It doesn't mean that MVC or Razor Pages or Minimal API, they don't use me. In fact, middleware pipeline is the base of all of the other options, but you don't actually have to use MVC or Razor Pages or Minimal API endpoints. You can just use this variable, which is our middleware pipeline. But that's really for a tiny application that you don't actually need three options. But we have these three options for creating our applications to implement our endpoint handlers. Now, typically, the endpoints, which contains the business logic, will contact a backend database. So I'm going to put the database here, and I'm going to put a rectangle here. So this rectangle contains all of them, but you have to know that the relationship here is basically this or this or this or this. So one of them. And typically it contacts a database. 
to get the data and prepare the data to be used in our algorithm within our business logic. So once we have the final data, we need to think about how to produce the results. And that's our final step. I'm just going to say the result. But it doesn't mean that we have to produce result manually. Whether we're producing HTML as a typical web application, or we're producing JSON or XML as in Web API, or produce any result, we don't have to do that manually because ASP.NET Core provides us with different mechanisms for helping developers to produce the result. Okay, we don't have to do it manually. So these are most parts of ASP.NET Core. Of course, there are different things that help developers to complete the web application, for example, configurations, environment setup, dependency injections. So all of these come together as parts of ASP.NET Core. We need to learn every single part of this and we need to dive deep. Once we know how this works and how to configure them, how to work with them, how to fill in the blanks, then we master ASP.NET Core. And whenever there's problems, we know how to troubleshoot, where to troubleshoot. That's the purpose of this course. So out of all of these steps here, only the first one are not done in middleware pipeline. Every single one of this are actually produced through the middleware pipeline. As you can see, I used one single arrow points one by one by one by one. So what does it mean? It means that once the request is translated into HTTP context object, this context object is actually being passed to the next one, to the next one, or to the last one, right? So this is actually looks like a pipeline and we actually call it the middleware pipeline. So let me reorganize the diagram a little bit and I'm going to put a rectangle to include all of this except the first one. So what we have here, this is our middleware pipeline, which is part of our web in ASP.NET Core. So I'm going to call this line and I'm going to use this bracket here to indicate what I'm referring to. So middleware pipeline refers to everything within this rectangle. And each one of these functionalities are actually performed by the middleware component. So you can call this middleware component. Okay. Some of them are performed by one component. This one is actually performed by two components. And model binding and model validation, they don't have their own components, but they happen within some other components. Nevertheless, all of these are actually executed within their own component or some other components. And we call this type of component the middleware components. And it makes sense to call them middleware components because middleware pipeline executes the middleware components one by one by one. So that's our middleware, which encompass everything except the first one. So then the question comes, who is responsible to translate the request to HTTP context. That is our HTTP server. And in ASP.NET Core, the HTTP server that we are using is called the Castro server. So this diagram is a very detailed breakdown. So let's draw another diagram, which is actually a high level diagram. Okay, first of all, we're gonna have our browser here. The browser sends a HTTP request to the web server. Now the web server consists of our HTTP server, which is our Castro server. So I'm going to just call it Castro server. This Castro server is responsible to listen to the request. So once it sees the request, it's going to translate the HTTP request into the H and then it's going to work with our web application. So our web application is here. So how does it pass the request, which is the HTTP context object to our web application. And then our web application actually contains the middleware pipeline, which is displayed right here. So 
Let's do it differently. Let's just put a web application label up here. And then I'm going to draw a pipeline here. So this represents our middleware pipeline. Request object, which is our HTTP context object, is passed into the middleware pipeline. And then our middleware pipeline executes typically many different middleware components, one by one by one. Here I'm just drawing three different components, but eventually the HTTP context object is filled with data, usually filled with the HTTP response. And that HTTP response is returned back to the browser, and now browser is able to display the result. So you can see that from high level, we have browser talk to the Castro server, and the Castro server talks to our web application. And web application uses the middleware pipeline to execute different middleware components. And then the HTTP response is produced and passed back to the browser. So our ASP.NET Core development framework contains both the Castro server as well as the web application. So that's the high level. And the detail diagram is right here. Right? The HTTP request comes to be translated to HTTP context, and then goes through routing, authentication, authorization, model binding, model validation, and it uses one of these technologies here to execute the endpoint database, usually context. It doesn't have to, right? and produce the result. And this result will be put into the HTTP response. Right, so I think we have a missing line here, which is like this. And once the HTTP response comes back to browser, then it's going to be displayed right here in the browser. That's a typical web application which displays the uh, everything in the web page. Sometimes you use Epsilon Core to create a web API. For example, in this case, we have minimal API. The consumer which is the client, may not be a browser. And we're going to cover all of that in our course. But in this lesson, you learn about the high-level structure of ASP.NET Core. We have browser, we have Castro server, and we have web application. And we also broke it down into different parts. The Castro server translates and then performs, and then the web application performs all of these functionalities through something that is called the middleware pipeline. And that's the anatomy of ASP.NET Core. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.